Shoba. Today I'll talk about the Netflix documentary, The Haunting at the Cecil Hotel. From a traveler's point of view, what happens if a hotel you pick turns out to be dodgy? I look at the Cecil Hotel story and take on board the point of hotel safety. And I've got some tips for you. So let's look at this. The Haunting at the Cecil Hotel documentary came to my attention when my teenage son mentioned it to me. He knew all about Elisa Lam and how she had gone, done some internet game where she punched an elevator numbers in a hotel in a certain order and she vanished to a different dimension. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Turns out it's one of the random stories floating around about Elisa Lam's vanishing. So let's talk about the story itself first. The vanishing at the Cecil Hotel revolves around the disappearance of 21-year-old Canadian student Elisa Lam. She was from Vancouver and missing in February 1st, 2013. She was a solo female traveler in search of adventure, and she picked the Cecil in LA because after all, La La Land is for dreams of adventure. Hotel Cecil is in downtown LA, right next to Skid Row. When we went to downtown LA just for a couple's trip, we were shocked by Skid Row. It's right next to the Arts District, where we were hanging out at craft beer places and art galleries. One wrong turn and you're in Skid Row. Elisa Lam was also quite artsy and so probably loved being near the young, vibrant art scene of LA's arts district. All that was left after Elisa's disappearance was the security camera footage which lasts almost four minutes. She steps in and out of the elevator, peers around the doors and seems to hide from someone. At one point you may see the flicker of a dark shoe which could belong to someone else. Her hands are moving randomly like she's talking to someone on scene. When she walks off, the elevator doors open and close randomly with no one in it. Super creepy. So an investigation is begun and makes worldwide news, and the internet speculation takes off as well. On February 19th, Elisa's body is found on one of the hotel's rooftop water tanks, which I guess no one had bothered to check until then. Hotel guests had complained of brown water running from the taps. I felt so bad for the European guests who just wanted a cheap hotel in LA. They were in the documentary and had no idea what they had booked into when they booked the Cecil. First opened in 1923, the Hotel Cecil is a 15-story art deco building with a grand lobby and 700 rooms. But the hotel and its reputation has steadily gone downhill since its heyday back then. The Cecil has always been associated with debt thanks to numerous murders and suicides. In one incident, a woman threw herself out of the hotel window and fell on top of a woman on the street below. Amy Price, the last general manager of the Cecil, said that during her tenure, tenor, tenure there, something like 80 people died in the hotel. And I didn't understand why she was still working there, because that just seemed weird. I would have quit after the first couple of deaths, you know? The maintenance manager, he walked me through the entire hotel. Along the way, you know, he would just point and say, someone died here, someone died there. Suicides overdoses, murders. The Cecil is part of a Skid Row program which houses homeless or low-income persons for extended periods of time. Richard Ramirez, aka the Night Slucker, who terrorized LA from 84 to 86, also stayed at the Cecil for a few months. He'd go to the Cecil after committing his crimes and throw his clothes in the dumpster in the back alley and walk to his room in his bloodstained underwear. No one better than eyelash. What absolutely freaked me out was that the hotel said they had different floors where hotel guests were and where the local residents were. But the hotel elevator van served everyone. So you could totally have been a hotel guest who got into the elevator with anyone. A serial killer, someone coming off a bad drug trip, or someone who mentally ill, or just a foreigner visitor, you know, who didn't know anything. Remember American Horror Story Hotel the, that season? Hotel Cortez is actually based on stories from the Cecil. On a set, but the Cecil was the inspiration. For example, both hotels are dated and creepy, 20s hotels in LA that have seen better days. Hotel Cortez also has people jumping out of windows, instances of water contamination, and a serial killer in residence. Anyway, back to Elisa Lam. Elisa Lam's death was ruled as an accidental drowning. She suffered from bipolar disease, and on the time she decided not to medicate herself, she would evolve into psychotic episodes, where she really did believe someone was out to get her, and her belief that her life was in danger felt real to her. Lisa Lamb's story is a sad story of a perfect storm happening. A woman with a tragic backstory meets a hotel with a tragic backstory and the whole thing ends tragically. Can you avoid checking into a hotel that has a dicey past? I can't say that price is necessarily an indicator. You can stay at a great budget hotel and it's clean and friendly. 
I remember when I traveled to Hamburg alone and stayed at the Hotel Torchway at Hamburg. It definitely seemed like my kind of place, a character hotel with a cheap charm and a great location. It was only after I got to Hamburg I realized that the hotel was the former Gestapo headquarters in Hamburg during World War II. People were brought into this building to be questioned and very likely put on a train to their deaths in concentration camps in the East. Their family members in Hamburg would remember this building as the last place they saw their loved one. The hotel was part of a long-running discussion by the city of Hamburg on what to do with the complex that had such bad memories for the city. Do you tear it down? Do you fix it up? In the end, it was decided the whole thing should be regenerated as a hotel, restaurant, and retail destination. Did I know that when I looked from London? No, I didn't. The news stories in English didn't mention its past. Okay, I have to say the Hotel Churchway was perfectly nice and safe. However, I do believe that place is a uh, place memory. Hard to explain, but it's the idea that places remember and they do it through their monuments, architecture, style, etc. Honestly, I was a little creeped out by the thoughts of all the horrors that had happened in the building. That building saw a lot of evil happen within its walls. By the way, the Cecil has been closed in 2017. It's been sold for over $80 million. Half the building will be low-income housing and the other half is a luxury hotel. The rooftop where Elisa's body was found will have a bar area and a waiting pool for LA's hip young thing, supposedly. So now you know. As a traveler, what precautions should you take when you travel? I wish it wasn't the case, but the world is what it is and you need to be on alert if you are traveling alone or with children. Research your accommodation thoroughly, not just the neighborhood it's in, but also surrounding neighborhoods. You need to know where to go and where to avoid. Let someone know your travel plans. Lisa Lamb did that, and so her parents knew she was in trouble the first day she would be home, big home, where she did regularly. They also knew where she was staying. Maybe you don't want to tell your parents, but so tell someone you trust to keep an eye on you. Moreover, don't broadcast where you are staying on social media. It's just too easy for the wrong sort of people to find you. I always double lock a hotel room when I'm by myself. I also recommend that you take something like the lock locker with you. It's cheap, doesn't weigh much, and stops your door from being pushed open. I also avoid huge hotels when I'm by myself or traveling with the kids without my husband. Too many hallways, too many rooms, too far away from the front desk and the front door. And pay extra money to stay safe. It's worth the cost. Well, don't take a late flight because you will land somewhere new in the dark. It might be cheaper, but you'll walk up to your accommodation and find out it's not what was advertised. During the day, you still have time to change your plans. For example, I was traveling just with the kids and rented a house that was not as advertised. It was dirty and smelly and I had this irrational fear of bed bugs. So we just took ourselves to the nearest hotel that had availability. It was only a two-star, but it was bright, safe, and most importantly, clean. We did the same thing in Belize where the only option was a family room and a hostel, but the hostel was safe and clean. Internet sleuths may focus on the whodunit aspect, but as a frequent traveler, I looked at the Cecil Hotel story and take on board the point of safety in hotels. If you would like to watch any of my other travel content, feel free to check out my other videos. If you like what you see, then remember to click like and um, subscribe below and also follow me on my blog, which is linked below. Thanks so very much for watching. Bye.